sir. Okay, welcome uh, to this session of um, uh, partial di di differential equations for engineers. So in this session, we are supposed to you know, clarify the doubts you guys are having. So uh, in, in the Google form, we have not received any questions and uh, uh, the YouTube is on in the chat box. You can post your queries uh, as well as uh, uh, you can, uh, you can, you can uh, put in the forum, okay? So uh, just check whether we have anything, uh, Bitan, just check. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do, we'll go to the forum and whatever the questions have been put up, we'll just go through them. Questions. And uh, uh, the YouTube is on in the chat box, you can post your queries, uh, as well as uh, yeah. you, know, uh, you can, uh, no, we we can, uh, put in the forum. Okay, so uh, just okay. So now they can hear me. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Done. So so uh, therefore, uh, uh, if uh, before coming, you know, uh, before receiving any questions, we can go to the forum and whatever the questions have been put up, we can start discussing them. Okay, we can just uh, open up those uh, queries. And in the meantime, we keep on looking into those things, whether they have put up uh, any queries or not. Okay, so uh, uh, one typical question uh, we got that uh, how many boundary conditions uh, are to be presented in solving uh, uh, in a partial differential equation. The number of boundary conditions will be depending uh, the order on a, on a particular, you know, um, uh, independent uh, variable. Okay, for example, if we have a term del square u del y square, then you should have two boundary conditions specified on y. And if you have a term like del u del t, suppose you are, you are having an equation, partial differential equation, del u del t is equal to del square u del y square. So in that case, you require to have one condition, one boundary condition on t and two boundary conditions on y. Okay. So uh, that was one of the questions, I think, boundary conditions they employed to evaluate the Okay, and typically the what the, the use of the boundaries, uh, the governing equation is valid only within the, uh, the you know uh, control volume as well as on the boundary. But the boundaries are valid, boundary conditions are valid, valid only on the boundary, not within the control volume of the whole system. Okay, then uh, let us look into another question. Then at a typical question that I can remember that uh, people used to ask how the, uh, you know, uh, the partial differential equation will be, you know, broken down into sub problems. Okay. So uh, the typical problem is that if you have, uh, it, it's, it's called principle of linear superposition. Okay. So the first point is that my uh, operator should be linear. So that is the first and foremost point. If my operator is linear, then I can go for separation of variable type of solution. If the operator is not linear, then I cannot use separation of variables. I have to go, I have to take recourse to numerical technique or some other technique. Okay. So application of separation variable is subject to, you know, the, the governing equation has to be linear. Okay. So depending on the, you know, non-homogeneous term in the system of equations, what are the, what is the system of equation? System of equation consists of governing equation, that is the partial differential equation, as well as the boundary conditions. Okay, so uh, the boundary condition, if there are, you know, uh, three boundary conditions, you know, two boundary conditions are present, and there are three non homogeneities present in the one, one in the governing equation and two in the boundary condition, let us say, then 
you have to divide this problem into three sub problems considering one non homogeneity at a time now there is a catch here so if you you know if if you if you define suppose you have you have a you have an equation like del u del t is equal to del square u del t del del x square okay so it is a typical you know heat conduction transient heat conduction problem in uh, two dimension one dimension in space and one dimension in time so del u del t is equal to del square u del x square okay so in this in this you know partial differential equation we have two boundary conditions specified on x one at let's say x is equal to 0 and other is let's say at x is equal to 1 if you have two homo, you know non homogeneous you know boundary conditions so depending on the number of non homogeneities present in the system we have to divide the problem into sub problems that many number of sub problems so in this particular problem del u del t is equal to del square u del x square we have two non homogeneous boundary conditions on x okay and so therefore i have, i'm going to divide this problem into two sub problems okay in one sub problem uh, and uh, and uh, the um, uh, uh, another so there are two non homogeneous at the boundary condition and one non homogeneous present at the initial condition if the initial condition is is uh, non non homogeneous that is non zero and the and both the boundary conditions are homogeneous then it is known as a well post problem and the solution of the well post problem is is well defined so all we know how to solve the well post problem so therefore uh, i have to convert the ill post problem into an well post problem what is an ill post problem an ill post problem is that uh, the boundary condition non homogeneity in the boundary condition is remaining intact and the initial condition is homogeneous so that is an ill post problem so let us come back to this particular uh, pro uh, problem del u del t particular equation del u del t is equal to del square u del x square okay so in this equation i have three sources of non homogeneity right one one in the uh, uh, you know uh, in the initial condition and other two are in the boundary condition so i have to divide this problem into three sub problems considering one non homogeneity at a time so the first uh, you know uh, sub problem will be at t equal to 0 u is equal to u not that is the non homogeneous initial condition and i force the other two boundary conditions to be homogeneous that means at x is equal to 0 my u1 equal to 0 at x is equal to 1 my u1 equal to 0 so this is a well post problem right? because at t equal to 0 you have non homogeneous boundary condition at and at x is equal to 0 and 1 you have homogeneous boundary condition so this is a standard eigen value problem and you can go ahead with the separation of variable type of solution uh, i know you, know, you all know we have discussed number of times how to solve this equation now let us come to the u2 u2 is basically you have at t equal to you have you are dealing with you are dealing with only one non homogeneity at the boundary condition that means at t equal to 0 u2 equal to 0 at t at x equal to 0 let's say my u2 equal to u2 not and and x is equal to 1 u2 equal to 0 so basically i am keeping one non homogeneity in the boundary condition that is at x equal to 0 intact and forcing the other boundary conditions other non homogeneities to vanish so now there is a catch because this is an ill post problem because at t equal to 0 uh, the boundary condition the the initial condition is zero so it is homogeneous so therefore i have to divide this problem into two sub problems one in uh, I, uh, i will divide this problem to a steady state solution that is time time independent part and another is the transient solution that is the uh, time dependent part okay so i will uh, basically write my u2 as u2s which will be basically steady state solution and it will be a sole function of x and the other part is u2t which is a function of both x and t okay so uh, now what i will do i will put this equation in the mother problem that is in the in the partial differential equation and i will be getting a governing equation containing two terms one is um, uh, uh the de del u2 t del t is equal to d square u2 s dx square plus del square u2 t del x square and then i collect the 
uh, you know, similar terms and formulate the governing equation of U to S and U to T. Okay. So, and I will select my boundary condition. Similarly, I, I break down the uh, boundary condition into two parts, U to S and U to T. And I assign the non-homogeneous part with the steady state solution that automatically bring my boundary condition in the, uh, uh, the non earlier, which was non-homogeneous boundary condition that becomes homogeneous. So in the U2T, I'll be getting one uh, you know, uh, non-homogeneous part in the uh, initial condition that will be the negative of the steady state solution. So that is, that is a non-homogeneous initial condition. And because of this, you know, breaking down of the sub problems, the boundary condition of the this transient problem U2T will be homogeneous. So this becomes my U2T is now become becoming a uh, you know well completely well post problem. And the, we know the how to how to solve the this type of problem using separation of variable type of solution. And the steady state part is basically a straightforward problem, and that can be solved because it is an ordinary differential equation. And we know how to solve an ordinary differential equation, so that that will be solved. Similarly, I break down the prop. The, the I will formulate the next sub problem considering the other boundary condition to be homogeneous, and uh, and the initial condition and the the first boundary condition to be uh, uh, homogeneous. And I will be retaining the uh, in the other non homogeneity in the other boundary condition. And again, I will be breaking down this problem exactly the same way with the time dependent part and the time independent part. And I will go ahead with the uh, with the procedure exactly like U two, U two. Okay, and then I will add up all solution. I will, I will superimpose all the solutions up and I'll be getting the complete solution of the original mother problem. Do you have any other, any questions? Uh, okay, special, special, uh, kindly discuss special ODs and the elliptical partial differential equation. Okay, elliptical partial differential equations are the equations like del square u, del x, you know, whenever you will be, it is basically, uh, so, see, the chemical engineering problem, it's, it's, it's mainly two types of problem. One is the transient problem, another is the steady state problem. And in most of the cases, my plant will be running in the steady state. So the transient variation will be, will be, will be lost and uh, the product output at the steady state will be most important thing. Whether you'll be getting the consistent quality of the product, that will be most important. So therefore, um, uh, the elliptic partial differential equations will be representing a steady state chemical engineering problem. On the other hand, the parabolic partial differential equation will represent a transient chemical engineering problem. So first of all, the elliptic partial differential equation will be corresponding to a steady state process physically. Uh, how, to, how to evaluate whether the partial differential equation is elliptical, parabolic or hyperbolic? So I think in uh, in the first two lectures we have defined um, how to how to um, you know get the you know whether the equation is parabolic, uh, elliptical or hyperbolic. You have to formulate the equation in the form of del square u del x square in the vector notation uh, is, is equal to and all the other terms will be on the right hand side. That means second order coefficient will be clubbed on the left hand side. Okay. And then, then, then produce. Suppose there are it is a three-dimensional problem, so there will be nine equations. You'll be getting nine terms. You'll be getting not equation. Nine terms. You'll be getting second-order terms will be on the left-hand side. Okay. So uh, what are these nine terms? One will be del square u del x square, del square u del x del, del, del x um, del y, del square u del x del z. Second row will be del square u del y del x, del square u del y square, del square u del y del z. And third one will be del square u uh, uh, del x del z, del square u del z, uh, uh, del y del, del z, and del square u del z square. So out of all these nine coefficient, nine term, nine terms on the left hand side, I write everything on the right hand side, everything else. So then I will collect all the nine coefficient and put them in the matrix form. Okay. Now I will evaluate the eigenvalues of this matrix. If one of the eigenvalues is zero, it is straightforward a parabolic partial differential equation. If all eigenvalues are either positive or eigenvalues are either negative. That means all eigenvalues are of same sign. Then the partial differential equation is elliptic partial differential equation. And if all the eigenvalues are of mixed sign, then it is hyperbolic partial differential equation. Okay. 
So that is for the elliptical partial differential equation. Next, next one is uh, a kindly discuss special ODs. Okay. So uh, the standard, uh, the special ODs were why? First of all, why did we, um, uh, you know, learn special ODs? Whether the course is on partial differential equation. Okay. So uh, suppose uh, I am going to solve an equation. Del square del u del t is equal to del square u del x square. Okay, so uh, del, del square del u del t is equal to del square u del x square. So in this equation, and it's like let's say it's a it's a whole post problem. At t equal to zero, u is equal to u naught. At x equal to zero, u is equal to zero. And x equal to one, u is equal to u is equal to zero. Uh, so this is a standard eigenvalue problem, and I can go ahead with the separation of variable type of solution. So, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, this, this forms a standard eigenvalue problem. Okay. Now, once you try to solve the eigenvalues and eigenfunction, the equation. So, basically, I, what I'm going to write, I'm I'm considering since the operator is linear, I'm considering U is com composed of a function. It's a product of two function. One is entirely function of time. Another is entirely function of x. So. Once so, therefore, you you put you put uh, let's say u is equal to capital T, which is a sole function of time, and capital X, which is a sole function of x, that is the independent variable in the x direction. Then I'll substitute these two with this this into the governing equation and separate out the variables. So you'll be getting two ODs. One is uh, um, uh, one by one, one one by t dt dt. Another is one by capital X d square x divided by d small x square. Okay, since the left hand side is entirely function of time and the right hand side is entirely function of space, they will be equal and they are equal. That simply indicates they will be equal to some constant. And this constant can be positive, negative, and zero. And we have already seen that if the constant is positive and zero, you'll be going to you're going to get a trivial solution. Trivial solution means if my u is equal to zero, which is not which is which is basically a trivial solution, which will always happen. So left hand side is equal to right hand side, but we are not going to look into this. So therefore, uh, what we will be doing, uh, we will be looking for non-trivial solution. That means if this e constant is negative, then we are going to get a non-trivial solution. Now, let us formulate the governing equation of the two equations. One is that the 1 by t dt dt is equal to minus lambda square. So if the solution we know it is the exponential term, uh, the solution is t is equal to exponential minus let's say ln square t. So that is a straightforward. What is the other problem? The other problem is one by x d square x dx square plus lambda square is equal to zero. That means d square x dx square plus lambda square x equal to zero. So this is an ordinary differential equation, which is uh, quite, quite common in the, uh, in the rectangular coordinate system. So this is an OD. We are talking about this OD. Once this OD is solved, we are going to get the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions. So the ordinary differential equation, the governing ordinary differential equation to estimate the eigenvalue and eigenfunction is the ordinary differential equation in the question. So whatever you have discussed about the special OD, the OD means that OD, which will be the governing equation for estimation of eigenvalues and eigenfunction. I'm talking about that OD. So, for, for a rectangular coordinate system and two dimen one dimension in space, this is straightforward problem. This becomes d square x dx square plus lambda square x is equal to zero. So you are going to solve this equation subject to x equal to zero at both the boundaries. If the boundary condition are Dirichlet, you are going to get you know, uh, combination of sine and cosine functions. And accordingly, you'll be evaluating the constant and sine functions will be the eigenfunctions and n pi will be the eigenvalues. If one of the, the condition at x equal to zero is Neumann and the other one is Dirichlet, x equal to one is Dirichlet, then you'll be getting the cosine function at the eigenfunctions and two and minus one pi by two are the eigenvalues. Okay, like that. Now, if, if so all these are oil and good, if the you know, coordinate system is Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system. Now this thing will break down if my governing equation is in, cylindri in cylindrical coordinate system or spherical coordinate system. Now, cylindrical coordinate system is rampant. It is quite common in chemical engineering applications because in most of the cases, you will be 
requiring to uh, see the uh, temperature distribution in a in a in flow for the flow through a pipe or or you know uh, uh, the velocity profile in a pipe or if you have a solid pipe you may be requiring to uh, uh, find out the temperature distribution if there is a heat transfer taking place by conduction so in that case the uh, you know the if, if the generic so that means if the generic uh, uh, form of the transient partial differential equation becomes del t del t plus grad square t equal to 0 grad square is the laplacian then for a rectangular coordinate system in one, two dimension one dimension in time and one dimension in space this becomes del square t del t del t plus del square t del x square is equal to um, is, is equal to 0 or, or uh, you know uh, uh, with a negative sign that will be equal to 0 but if it is you know cylindrical coordinate system the laplacian is of different form what is the lap form of the laplacian laplacian will be 1 over r del del r, r del del r 1 over r del del r of bracket r del t del r so that is the form of the laplacian in the cylindrical coordinate system now if you go through the separation of variable type of solution if you have a then then what is the governing equation the governing equation in a cylindrical coordinate system will be something like this del t del, del u del t sorry del u del t is equal to 1 over r del del r r del u del r so that will be the governing equation so see the difference between the earlier problem and this problem in the rectangular coordinate system the whole right hand side was del square u del x square in radial in the cylindrical coordinate system it will be 1 over r del del r r del u del r Okay. Now, if you use a separation of variable type of solution, and if you write the, the this equal, uh, you know, both sides will be so it will be a product of two function. One is entirely function of r, and is entirely function of t. If you substitute them, that and that will since left and separate out the variables, then left hand side will be purely a function of time, and the right hand side will be purely a function of space. That means r in this particular example. Now, so, uh, and they're equal, the, that means they must be equal to some constant. And again, this constant can be positive, negative, and zero. If this constant is positive and zero, you, will, you are going to get a trivial solution. So this positive has to, this constant has to be mandatorily negative. So now, if you formulate the, the governing equation for the eigenvalues, you'll be having a, uh, you'll, be, you'll be getting a, uh, um, uh, getting an ordinary differential equation, which is basically the Bessel function, zero total Bessel function, Bessel equation, whose solutions are the Bessel function of the first kind and the second kind. Okay. Similarly, uh, in in some uh, so that is the that is the that is a special ODE because the Bessel equation needs some special treatment like the like the rectangular coordinate system like d square x dx square plus lambda square x equal to zero. This equation, we know the solution. The solution is composed of sine function and cosine function. Similarly, <clears throat> the, in, in case of the Bessel equation of the, of, let us say, 0th order, the solution is composed of J0 and I0. J0 lambda and R, R and I0 lambda R. So these are the Bessel functions. So the solution, Bessel equation, uh, it consists of the solution of com, com, superposition of the 0th order Bessel function and the um, uh, first kind and the second kind. Now, the algebra and the properties of the Bessel functions are completely different of the compared to sine function, trigonometric functions like sine and cosine functions. It needs special attention. Similarly, if you have a, you know, a spherical coordinate system, for example, if you consider a problem, a practical problem, that you are quenching a solid ball heated solid ball. That means, suppose in, in some you know, chemical engineering application, you have to, or in some metallurgical application, you have heated a solid ball and you need to quench it by putting into water. So temperature, the ball will be losing the temperature. The quiescent, quiescent pool, pool will be basically gaining temperature. And since the pool is large, then the temperature may not be observed in the outside pool. So temperature of the ball will be definitely going down from its temperature, earlier temperature, which is pretty high let's say 400 degrees centigrade to you know pool temperature so there exists a temperature profile within the ball spherical ball 
And now, if we write out the equation of conduction, transient equation, and, and the question is how fast you are going to cool, quench, or how you know, uh, you know, basically the question is how fast you are going to cool. Okay, so therefore, that time dependent equation has to be solved. And what is the form of the equation? The form of the equation will be del t del t is equal to grad square t. And what is the Laplacian operator in this case? The, in this case, the Laplacian operator will be the spherical coordinate system. Okay, and the Laplacian operator in the, in one in, in the in the radial direction will become one by r square del del r of r square del t del r, right? So th so therefore, after separation of variable, if you uh, you know uh, uh, separate out the variables and form the governing equation of the eigenvalue problem, in this case, it becomes one by r square del del r r square del d square t dr d dr, 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 dr one by r square d dr r square dt dr is equal to uh, plus lambda square t it will be something like this on the other hand previously it was a cylindrical in the cylindrical coordinate system it was the bessel equation and in the spherical co co coordinate system this equation becomes um, uh, legendary polynomial okay and, and similarly, like the um, legendary, um, the Bessel equation will be consist, trigonometry equation will be consist of sine function and cosine function. And the Bessel equation will be, the solution of, of the Bessel equation will be consisting of the zero order, uh, say, let's say, of two kinds, J0 and Y0. Similarly, for the um, uh, Bessel equation, so the legendary polynomial will be having the legendary function, and the other will be. Uh, the legendary polynomial, something like that. Okay, so there will be two functions, p and q. So it will be the solution will be will be consisted of p and q, p n and, and q n of uh, lambda r. Okay. So these three different geometric, different coordinate systems will be will give rise different forms of ordinary differential equations will be which will be dictating the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. Okay, so that's why, and since all the three, you know, uh, differential equations for evaluation of the eigenfunction and eigenvalues, they will be having specific properties, and they are, we have to deal them, you know, carefully because each of the uh, like uh, trigonometric functions, like sine cosine, Bessel functions, Legendre polynomial, Legendre polynomial, Legendre functions, they will be having different types of, uh, you know, properties, and their treatment will be different. And, they are, and that's why they fall into the category of special ODEs. So that's why we have uh, studied the special ODEs. These ODEs are the are those ODEs which are which are, which will be a governing equation for evaluate estimation of the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Okay. So that was uh, Akram's. Uh, that is the answer to the Akram's question. Discuss about the special ODEs and elliptical PD. Uh, Akram, uh, uh, are you satisfied with this? Okay. Uh, okay, Akram, you can you can let us know if if you are if, uh, you know satisfied with the answer. Otherwise, we can discuss it even further. Okay. Next is uh, Avinash Karmakar. Avinash Karmakar is says, sir, how this will be helpful for civil engineering point of view. So, I mean, you want to <clears throat> say how this course will be helpful for the civil engineering point of view. If that is the case, I can tell you that, uh, you know, for the civil engineering point of view, you need to know the structure, structural stability, structural stability of uh, the stability, you have, to, you have to do the analysis of uh, uh, stability of a structure. Suppose you have a beam, the beam may be a cantilever beam or beam may be cantilever beam means it is supported to one side and hanging to the open to the other side. And, and if it, and then the beam may be, it, will, it may be supported like from the two sides. Okay. <clears throat> that means, uh, so, okay. So if there is a deflection, if there is a deflection, how that deflection will propagate as a function of space and time. Okay. If that deflection over a period of time, you know, it, it, it increases, it induces an instability to the structure and the structure may collapse. If the, uh, you know, uh, uh, deflection in the y direction of the beam will be dying down over a period of time, 
then the you know the, you know what is the disturbance that you have given the shock you have given it will be absorbed and it will be dying down in the long term so that if you, if you look into the governing equation of the deflection then this governing equation will be the hyperbolic partial differential equation so whatever we have studied for the hyperbolic partial differential equation in this course so that will be uh, you know pretty useful for the civil engineers and i know that some of the civil engineer engineers may also require to uh, evaluate the temperature profile along with the deflection because uh, deflection may, may be associated with the temperature distribution or some some kind of uh, you know some 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 problems like that so in those cases you know um, uh, the uh, heat conduction problem may be of of use so what i have tried to um, uh, you know teach in this particular course is that to give a generalized treatment generalized treatment for the various kinds of partial differential equations which are linear how to solve using separation of variables okay so that gives a solid understanding of from fundamentals for the solution of partial differential equations using separation of variable type of solution okay no now uh, definitely the civil engineers uh, civil engineering students will be benefited uh, you know, from the uh, discussion of hyperbolic partial differential equation that's for sure and for the other problems also they will be benefited i think okay avinash is that uh, uh, satisfactory to you okay any any questions no so we can go back to the uh, discussion forum and uh, see i have seen some uh, ill posed and whole posed problem we have already discussed the ill posed and whole posed problem and principle of linear superposition you are basically bring you know say, uh, divide the problems into sub problems depending on number of non homogeneities in the system and uh, if uh, out of these sub problems some sub problems may be having zero initial condition or homogeneous initial condition that has to be again divided by two sub problems one uh, time dependent another is time independent that is a general rule okay so now each sub problems will be uh, oil post problem and you can have a solution of the each sub problems and once the solutions are obtained then add up all solutions and uh, you'll be getting the uh, the solution of the overall problem okay anything else you know sources of non homogeneity in the forum formation of matrix value i know that i have already discussed you no know? so what is the the uh, governing equation all all the second order terms has to be take, uh, kept on the left hand side and all the other terms have to be kept on the right hand side okay and then uh, if it is a three dimensional problem then you will be having nine terms on the left hand side constitute a matrix con of, uh, containing the nine terms in each row in three rows and then evaluate the eigen values oh, that's how the matrix will be formed and the matrix has to be symmetric matrix that is true the matrix has, has to be has to be symmetric matrix if you have term if you have some term like 2 uh, del u del, del x uh, then then this has to be again 2 uh, del square u del x del y if it is that then you have to uh, divide you know break up this part into del square u del x del y uh, plus del square u del y del x and then the coefficient will be distributed in the in the matrix and the matrix has to be a symmetric matrix in order to evaluate the eigen values in order to determine the nature of the uh, uh, partial differential equation Uh, some some more no it's not there so uh, you, you should you should understand the you know different types of boundary conditions first there are the different types of boundary condition if the value of dependent variable is specified in one of the boundaries 
then it is known as a Dirichlet boundary condition. If the uh, you know uh, normal derivative is is derived, normal derivative means uh, suppose uh, um, uh, the, 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 if, the suppose the heat transfer is taking place in the x direction, that is normal to the plane of the surface. Then del t del x is specified at the, at a boundary. So that means derivative derivative of the independent vari dependent variable is specified in the boundary then uh, uh, that is called a normal boundary condition if 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 you have a mixed uh, boundary condition if you have a, if you have the, if the boundary condition is composed of the um, you know uh, value of the dependent variable and its derivative then it's called a mixed boundary condition okay akash gupta akash gupta said sir i am a bsc student please advise me on how to strengthen my fundamentals no matter what i do i always feel that i am lacking so it's a, it's a general question i think akash akshat akshat gupta okay so uh, my answer is that uh, if you have uh, how to how to strengthen your fundamentals so my uh, according to me the best way of uh, understand of uh, strengthen the fundamental is that suppose you read something you read something and uh, 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 and and if you have some uh, suppose suppose you, you read something okay and uh, let us let us understand that let's say you are reading the uh, first you know newton's laws of motion okay first law of motion second law of motion third law of motion the chapter is there then the application part of the chapter is very very important because that will be, that will that will that will if you solve more problems that will increase your understanding if the understanding increases the fundamentals will also increase okay so therefore i think um, uh, what you what you have to do at the end of the chapter there are example problems as well as the exercise problems okay so you solve the example problems so and once you solve the example problem try to understand uh, so means solve the example problem by yourself not by looking into the example completely then you try to solve the exercise problems this problem solving capability will increase the fundamental understanding of any theory so that is that is my understanding of how to how to strengthen the fundamentals what i used to do when i was a student i used to go through the fundamentals fundamentals of the theoretical understanding and then then try to apply look for different types of books or you know different type of problems which will be dealing with the you know fundamental concepts that you have already studied in the theory portion once these problems are solved by yourself then lots of you know uh, understanding will be very very clear and you will be strengthening your uh, you know fundamentals second point is that once you solve all the problems don't think that the, the, the problems can be occurring only these types whatever they are in the textbook that you have the problems that you have already, you have solved in the example or in the exercise you try to formulate problems by yourself i used to do that when i was a student i used to suppose my in, in in this particular course so my professor has told me how to solve the partial differential equation with one example and that example may be with the dirichlet boundary condition so immediately in my mind was that how to what will be the solution if one of the boundary condition is neumann if the, what is the what will be the nature of the solution if one of the boundary condition is robin mixed if i interchange the boundary condition If I if I have the Neumann you know, at x equal to zero and Dirichlet at, uh, at x equal to one, if I interchange the boundary condition, if if at x equal to zero I have a uh, Dirichlet and and x equal to one I have a Neumann, what will be the form of boundary condition I will be getting? If the boundary condition at x equal to zero is uh, you know Robin mixed and the other boundary condition is um, Dirichlet, if it is otherwise, what will be the form of the solution I am going to get? That means. once you get the theory you are going to solve the example problems as well as the exercise problem or the or the problems that your teacher has taught you not only that you should not stop at the point you have to take it forward and try to try to formulate similar problems on your own from the theory that you have already taught and learned you have been taught and learned so from that you try to formulate the problems on your own so once that is that will be done i think uh, you will be knowing ins and outs of the theory so once you are successfully able to formulate a problem based on the theory that you have learned and you are getting the solution then 
the i know uh, the details of the theory will be known to you and the fundamentals will be strengthened and then you won't be uh, thinking that uh, you are even lacking so uh, the, i think that is the only way practice practice and practice and it will be a very honest practice not only uh, the you should take the cue from the textbooks or you know exercise books you have to uh, utilize your uh, brain power and your understanding your intelligence and then you try to formulate the problems on your own and solve them that will definitely clear your fundamentals okay uh, akshat uh, you, you can comment on this okay let's go back <coughs> okay another another uh, question i think it is important question whenever you'll be dealing with uh, uh, dealing with problems like uh, um, uh, uh, bessel equations and legendre polynomials that means whenever you'll be dealing with uh, prob when you will be dealing with problems in cylindrical coordinate or in the spherical coordinate um, you may be having you know you may be you may be having only one boundary condition for example i am uh, uh, i i would like to find out what is the temperature profile uh, in inside a liquid and that liquid is flowing through a spherical in you know, a cylindrical pipe okay so it will be a definitely a problem of the of the cylindrical coordinate system and the boundary condition is known so you need since it is a order to in the cylind uh, in the radial coordinate system you need to establish you need to have two boundary condition to specify this problem one boundary will be definitely specified that at t at uh, r is equal to capital r that means at the edge of the cylinder at the boundary of the cylinder at the surface of the cylinder either the velocity is known what is the velocity velocity is the mostly boundary condition or the temperature will be known because you know the surface temperature because that is a measurable quantity you know the surface temperature but you need to know one more boundary you need to have one more boundary condition in order to solve this uh, second order Uh, uh, go go governing equation either in the cylindrical or in the spherical coordinate system same for the sphere we know the temperature on the spherical yeah, on the sphere surface that means at r is equal to capital r but i do not have any clue what will be the other conditions okay so but you required to have two boundary conditions to solve this type of problem solve this type of equation so what will be the other boundary condition the other boundary condition will be coming from the physical understanding of the problem so that's why these are known as the physical boundary condition what is the physical boundary condition for the flow through for the velocity profile um, of the, of a liquid inside a pipe the initial the, uh, the boundary condition is specified at r is equal to capital r so you need to know one more boundary condition and it, it has to be at r is equal to 0 you'll be getting del u del r is equal to 0 so what is that it is a symmetry it is called a symmetric boundary condition that means del u del r equal to 0 means the velocity will be maximum at r is equal to 0 uh, that means at the central line that means you will be having a zero boundary condition at on both the surfaces so that means there will be a symmetric point where it will be maximum then it will be falling down and coming to zero at the wall so the symmetry point is r is central line that is r is equal to 0 so the physical boundary condition is r is equal to 0 So at r is equal to zero, my del u del r is equal to zero, and uh, at r is equal to one, my boundary boundary condition that is u is equal to u not or some some value is equal to one whatever in a non-dimensional form. So, so you need to invoke a physical boundary condition. You need to invoke a physical boundary condition to solve this type of problem. Okay, so. Um, uh, that physical boundary condition may not be stated in the problem that you have to you have to bring that from the physical understanding of the situation and typically if you solve the bessel equation of the legendre polynomial uh, uh, you will be you will be having a term which will be it, it, the solution will be consisting of two parts for the for the bessel equation it will be bessel if bessel equation uh, bessel function of the first and second guy j, j and y and the legendre polynomial It, it, it will be p and q legendre equation it will be p and q so out of this in this two the y and the q basically they are not they go un, 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 undefined or unbounded at 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 origin at r equal to 0 so therefore the, the corresponding coefficients will be equal to 0 so, so that's how you will be handling the 
you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, will be, it will be handling the uh, poles of the equation. These are called poles where the where at r equal to zero, the whole function becomes, you know, this is, say, let's say it's one by r del del r of u del, del u del r. Okay, so one by r, that means r equal to zero, the whole terms go unbounded. Okay, so these are called, called the poles of the system. So poles will be overcome by this type of technique. Okay, so that is very important. So uh, physical boundary conditions. Okay, Akshat, uh, um, so these, these are you have answered, no, no, this one. Okay, fine, right. So this same action. Sir, I have one more general question. Okay, it's a general question. I'm trying to figure out what field I'll be I'll I'll pick for my career. So could you please tell me what was what was it that attracted you to your current career? To your current career, to my career? Okay. My career, what is attracted the most is the if I if I can uh, describe a physical system by mathematical expressions. And solving the you know mathematics, so that means uh, modeling and simulation. So if I what, what is the modeling? Modeling is basically to describe the physical situation, like a like a conduction. I was talking about conduction. How the conduction the tem heat conduction in case of heat conduction, how the temperature field proceeds as a function of time and space. So you'll be landing with a partial differential equation in time and space. Okay. So so this heat conduction problem is mathematically described by the partial differential equation. So that is the modeling. Modeling is the basic, so, so it's basically an engineer's perspective, not a scientist's perspective. So I would like to always find out how to, how I, how well I'm describing my uh, physical system by set of, you know, equations. And the simulation is solution of these equations. That simply means since I'm a chemical engineer, we are dealing with actual chemical processes which are basically uh, cons uh, consisting of involving huge material, manpower, energy, and cost. So one experiment, if I do in real life, and if it does not give my you know uh, uh, expected result, then you, you you can understand how much loss I'm going to incur. Huge amount of manpower, energy, and material. So the whole batch is spoiled. So therefore, it is better to conduct virtual you know experiments so i would the, the in my career what is attracting me most is that i would i would like to model the um, the physical situation by a set of mathematical expression and solve them so that i can reduce the number of experiments and i can increase the you know virtual experiments and based on the virtual experiments i can really try to understand what will be my optimum operating conditions or requirements those will be um, uh, needed for running an actual plant so basically, a priori prediction of plants performance by writing relevant mathematical expressions to model the you know, you know, physical system and to solve them. Okay, that was most attracting to me. Second question, Akshat, so that I may gain insight on how to look at things. You're very helpful. Okay, so 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 I'm sorry to derail the session with general question, but I'm very confused about it. Yes, so Akshat, it's basically the my my uh, question, my my answer to your question is basically you try to go deep into the fundamentals and try to see the application how how to how to apply your theory, how to apply your theory to learn the actual to to uh, you know quantify the actual physical system that will give you the uh, you know better understanding of the fundamentals. Okay. Uh, Gupta Sri Heshal, sir, how to keep myself motivated in studies and research among this pandemic? It is it is very you know relevant question. Sometimes we are also getting demotivated in this situation. So you have to strengthen yourself. Uh, how to how to keep yourself motivated? One thing I I, I regularly do I regularly um, do exercises. That, that keeps myself you know. Uh, uh, that that uh, takes away the distraction and I can motivate more on the studies. Okay, so that is one thing I can uh, talk about and also go through good books. You know, uh, take a respite from the mobiles and the computers and uh, try to go through good books that will be really motivating. Oh, he retracted the message. Manjit, any good reference book for this topic? Yes. 
Uh, the good reference book uh, on this uh, course is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the one book is by uh, Dr. S. Pushpavanam. That is one of the good one of the good reference book. And the reference book is, uh, you know, uh, solutions of it, something like the, the authors are basically uh, Verma, Arvind Verma. If you look into a uh, search in the Google, the books by Arvind Verma, that books on this particular topic will come up. Dodo and rice, rice and dough. Uh, I think it's D-Do, okay? So these are the authors. So uh, uh, these, uh, these are some stack gold, the book by stack gold. H stack gold, okay. So these are some of the reference books which are quite uh, you know uh, by by Loni also. There is there's a book by Loni, okay. N N Loni, Norman Loni. So you can look into that book also. Uh, this is not S L Loni, that the ten plus two book. It is it is by uh, Norman Loni. So that is also a good reference book. How the mathematics applied in robotics and uh, Mechatronics engineering practically. Yes, I think uh, uh, you, you, you can apply the mathematical uh, uh, rules to uh, govern the various you know, movements of the robotics. So different movements and the steps the robot will be taking that can be predicted a priori by the mathematical models. So these are exactly what I'm trying to say. So any physical model can be definitely expressed or summarized by a set of mathematical expressions or equations. So these are the this is the modeling of the whole system, and then simulation is the solution of this model. And what is the solution gives? The solution gives a prediction of the performance of the system. So mathematical expression represents the model. So simulation is the solution of this model. Outcome of the simulation is the predict proper performance prediction of the system. So definitely, mathematics <laughs> applied mathematics will be helpful in robotics and mechatronics engineering. Okay, is there any any questions? I'll be uh, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, Akshat gives the same uh, question in the Google form, so you already looked into that. Okay. The initial is something. Absolutely clear. Thanks, Tejas. <clears throat> now, uh, students may uh, wonder that uh, uh, in this particular course, we have taught about only separation of variables uh, for, um, you know, and as I, as I told, these are all uh, valid for the linear uh, systems. If the system is nonlinear, Uh, if if the if the we'll come back to this, uh, if the system is uh, nonlinear, uh, then whatever the solutions we have discussed using separation of variables that may not be valid. Okay, that is true, but in most of the uh, uh, in uh, in most of the cases the uh, uh, in most of the cases the systems are nonlinear. But for solution of nonlinear equations. You need to take that take recourse to the numerical techniques and numerical techniques. You have it's basically computational intensive. So before taking to numerical techniques, there are ways to linearize a nonlinear problem. There are various ways to make the nonlinear system linearize as a first approximation. So my advice is, if the actual system, practical system is nonlinear, linearize it first. Take take the take the get the solution by separation of variable. Then what you get, you'll be getting the first trend of the solution. That will be very, very helpful to understand whether the mathematical code, numerical methods will be giving you a, a right kind of solution or not. Okay. And the last question I will take from Manjit. Uh, we know a lot of natural things follow mathematics. Can you tell maths is an is a invention or discovery? Uh, I think maths is not, it is not, it is neither an invention nor a discovery. Mathematics is basically a natural science and uh, you'll be, you'll be basically learning it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all.